Welcome to Faith Revival Holiness Church, also Faith Revival Place International. We host minister and prophet M.G. Mays. Let us begin in prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you, Father, for all that you're doing for our lives. Thank you, Father God. We praise you. Thank you, Yahweh. Thank you, Spirit of you. for all that you do. Father, help us and help us because we have all kinds of people around us that are not nice. Well, help us to keep and be good and holy in spite of all the people that are not so good and holy. We thank you and praise you. Amen. All right, well, today's um, sermon, uh, I mean, uh, Lesson is called Barukbat Chazon, which means vision. Amen. Second Baruch, chapter 35, 1 through 5, 36, 1 through 11, 37, 1, and 38, 1 through 4, 39, 1 through 8, and 41 through 4. All right. And it says, I, Baruch, went to the Kadosh place, the holy place, sat on the, the ruins and wept and said, all that my eyes were spring and my eyelids that they were foundation of tears. For how shall I be sad over Zion and lamentate over Jerusalem, Jerusalem? For at the place where now I prostrate, a high kadoshim, um, high um, holiness, used to offer kadosh sacrifice, holy sacrifice, and place whereon incense and fragrance uh, spice. And how now, however, that of which we of proud has become dust, that which our souls desire is ash. And when I had said this, I fell asleep at the place I saw a vision in the night. And behold, there was a forest with trees that was planted on the plains surrounding by the high mountains and rugged rocks. The forest occupied much space. And behold, over against its vines arose, and from under the foundation ran peacefully. And the foundation came to the, to the forest and changed into a great waves, and those waves submerged the forest and suddenly uprooted in the entire forest and overflowed it, all of the mountains which surround it. And the high of the forest became low, and the, that top of the mountain became low. And the mountain became so strong that it left nothing of, of the great forest except one cedar. And when it had also uh, cast that one down and destroyed the entire forest and uprooted it so that nothing was left of it, and it and its place was not even known um, um, almost. That the, the vine arose with the foundation in Shalom, peace, and a great controlly, and arose in the place which was not far away from the cedar. And they brought to him the cedar which had been cast down. And I saw it, and behold, that vine opened its mouth and spoke and said to the cedar, Are you not the cedar which remain of the force of wickedness? Because of you, the wickedness remains and has been done during all these years, but none, none, never goodness. And you... A prostrate power over that which did not belong to you. You did not even show compassion to 
uh, to that which did belong to you. And you had, had extended your power over those who were living far from you and kept those who are close to you in a net of wickedness. And you uprooted the souls always like one could not be uprooted. But now you now but now your time has hastened and your hour has come. Therefore, O cedar, uh, follow, uh, follow the force which has departed before you and become ashes with it, and let the earth be mixed together. And now sleep to, to, in distress and, and rest in pain until you last time comes, which you will return to the torments even more. And after these things, I saw the cedar was burnt and the vine grew, which is an all around it because of the valley full of unfading flowers. And I woke and I rose. And I prayed and says, O Yahweh, O Silver Master, you are the one who has always enlightened those who conduct themselves under, with understanding. Your Torah is life, and your wisdom is right always. And now show me the explanation of the vision. For you know that, that my soul has always been associated with your Torah, and that I did not depart from your, your wisdom from my early days. And now Yahweh answered and said to him, to me, Baruch, this aspiration of the vision which you have seen, as you have seen great forests surrounded by high rocky mountains, this is the world. And as you have seen the great forests surrounded by the high and rocky mountains, this is the world. Behold, the day will come when the kingdom that destroys Zion once will be destroyed, that it will be subjects to which will come after it. This again will also be destroyed after some time, and another, a third, will arise also that will possess power in its own time and then will be destroyed. And after the fourth kingdom arises, those powers is harsher and more evil than those which were before it. And it will reign and multiply of the times like a, a trees on the plains. And it will roll the times and, and uh, itself more than the cedars of Lebanon. And the truth will be hidden in, in itself in this, and all who are polluted with the unrighteousness will flee to its its like a evil beast, fleeing the, the creep into the forest. And it will happen when the time is fulfilled and approaches in, it, in which it will fall, that at that time the dominance of my anointed one, which is like a foundation and a vine, will be revealed. And when it will be revealed itself, it will uproot the multiple uh, to of, of its hosts. And that which you have seen, namely the tall cedar, which remains of the in the forest, and with regards to the words which the vine said to it, which you heard, this is the meaning. The last roller will be left alive at that time, will be, in, will be bound, where, whereas the entire host will be destroyed, and they will carry him on to Mount Zion, my anointed one will uh, con convince him uh, of all the wicked deeds 
and will assemble and set before him all the works of his hosts. And after these things, he will be killed him and protect the rest of my people who will be the foundation and the place that I have chosen. And his dominance will be last forever until the world of corruption has ended, until the time which has been um, given before has been fulfilled. This is your vision, and this is the aspiration. Amen. So yeah, there, there is a, a, a matter of time that has been allotted to all mankind on this earth to have 7,000 years. This is why when it talks about one day is a thousand, it's, it's, it's referring back into the fact that there's 7,000 years altogether that man and woman has of, of repentance and then it's all and then it's over with and uh, and we are actually there there's a small smidgen of time in between that and and actually the uh, everything coming to a close and we're in that right now we're actually in that very small smidgen I mean we only have a couple years left I mean literally I mean I mean if people only knew they would be all on their knees but would they be really sincere? Would they be really sincere to God? Or, or most people wouldn't. Most people are just trying to escape the the judgment, the final, final judgment. And instead of really sincerely saying they're sorry for what they've done, you know. And so the, the days of days are here. And the church that are is religious in their own eyes and not God's eyes, and the and the religiosity is in the synagogue in their own eyes and not God's eyes. So you can be all you want on that, but it's still going to happen. What has been prophesied throughout the Bible and um and also holy books like the Second Brook, uh, book here, all these things are going to be fulfilled. You can pray them all you want away, but they will not. You know, and the people that are in this fair and the churches, I tell you right now, in synagogue, are you really right with God? Because you you so much want to be right in your own eyes that you don't see what is right in the word. Amen. And this is what goes on in the churches and synagogues. They have fallen away from the presence of God, whether they know it or not. They have not honored Yahweh. They have not honored the Spirit of God, which is the, also the Messiah, Yeshua. They've gone astray in their own ways. And, and, the, and the pride of life has come into them, whether they know it or not. And they have need to repent of these things because the time of times are here. And uh, he shortened those times because he says he did. Elsewhere in Scripture, in the Gospels, it says that. But, but so that's why we don't know exactly how much time we really have. But I can guarantee you, when he shortens the judgment, it's shortened. We did know it was three and a half years, because the first three and a half years was fulfilled by the, the Spirit of God that became the Messiah into flesh, human flesh. That was fulfilled and there's three and a half years left and that was shortened and everywhere to everywhere that God shortened the judgment this is why you study thyself to be approved by God and God's word and all the things that are good and holy and build you but every time he shortens a judgment in the Old Testament and sometimes there you find it in the New Testament things it's very short and so that is one thing you're a guarantee of knowing is, is the time that we're living in right now is very short. If it was three and a half years rigidly, and that's shortened, how much time of that do we have left of that shortening? We're right there. People in the church can deny it all they want. You know, and these people that deny it, are you really saved? Are you really saved? I, I'm good. You know what? These ministers... They can they can show you a lot of things, but if it's not in the spirit of God, they show it. It's 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 wasted time. 
It really is. Because when the Spirit of God is on their, the ministers of all sorts, and they're given the message that the Spirit of God wants, really wants, and they're right with God, then that is good. But there's very little of ministers of today that are doing this. And it needs to be known that the ministers better get on their knees and get right with God. Because the time of times is here. And you can deny it all you want. You can deny it all you want away, and it's never going to leave. It's not going to change. That we are in the final, final age of, of this grace that was inserted into the age of sin. And that's it's coming to an end. It's at the ending now. And that's why in the book of Joel, gets recorded again in the book of Acts of the Emissaries about... The judgment and revival coming together. The end and the beginning coming together. Amen. And so we need to understand. We need to get ready. This revival is coming. So is judgment. It's already started in a lot of ways, the judgment. But you, you have not seen no revival like this one. This is this one here that's coming. It's, it's not no practice rehearsal like the rest of them were. This is the real thing and when it hits it's here to stay and it doesn't matter what errors the people do it's not going to go like it before but I tell you what I warn the people that go into error and to go into things they shouldn't do the revival will correct that situation on you real quick amen because remember that revival can quickly do, go into judgment just as much as, as it being a revival. Amen to those that go astray. For that is what it is. That's what the, the grace of God, I mean, the uh, glory of God is. When he says the glory of God will blanket the earth, that's what he's saying. The glory to either will be judgment or revival. According to what the person's done. I mean, if you're wicked, it's judgment. If you're righteous, you're, you're, you're trying to repent, you're trying to do what's right, revival. And that's what God's glory really is. It brings to what the person has done. I mean, if they're wicked, they're not going to get revival out of that. Uh-uh. They're going to get judgment. Just like a person that's it's humble in their hearts to God and, and repenting and say, oh boy, I need to work on that. A real man, a real woman of God. And revival is going to overtake you. Amen. It's you, you're honest. You're good. You're, you're, you're working on things with daddy God and this, you, the, the, the older brother of all, that the father as well. The spirit of God, Yeshua. Amen. And you're working on these things. And that's what God will see. You're not just sitting there denying it. I mean, to denying what is here is a form of lukewarmness. It's in the church, too, whether you know it or not. And what has ever happened to the old days, churches and synagogues? I mean, you used to really carry on, have a good time with God. I mean, now it's all still everywhere. Even the ones that are, are sort of pretty good are not sort of not really good anymore because... There, you know what? The head of the church and synagogue needs to be the presence of God there. And it's not there. And I mean, you can muster it all you want, but I tell you what. The Spirit of God needs to be the lead of everything. And, 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 the, and when it's not, it, you're just fooling your own selves. Get right with God and start doing what God wants. And come out of Babylon. Come out of Babylon, church. Come out of Babylon, synagogue. And get ready, Israel. Israel. Israel, God's light's coming again to you. He'll restore you to the days of David. He said he would. It's here. Be obedient. For Yahweh told you to read the prophets and the Torah. And, the, and for the rabbis secretly to look into revelations. For I, you were commanded by the King of Glory, the one that you're supposed to love and serve with all your heart. Now go forth and be good and do what's right and make sure you pray good. 
for others a little bit better than you do on your rabbis in Israel. For I tell you, you you got the very heartbeat of God that needs to be in you for others. And long suffering, for that's what God has commanded you to do. Now go forth and do what's right. As well as the, the pastors and the churches and, and the, the deacons and the, the bishops, you need to get right with God. I stop this garbage. Lead by example of what the Bible already shows you. Amen. And do it. And be good. God can never say enough, be good to his children. Be good. Be good. It's one thing to be nice. That's, you know what? That's not what he's looking for. He's looking to be good. Okay? The world knows all about niceness, but their niceness is not so nice, as you know. They think they are. But when you're good, that's where, that's where it's all about. And you get the goodness of God through his word, through obeying his spirit that came into the flesh, Yeshua. And you know what? A lot of you rabbis know this now. And I know you, we all been hurt. Our, our, our past families way ago, okay? You know, we, it echoes. We know that. But what are we going to do about it today? Shouldn't we help our the, the people in the churches? The rabbis need to go over there and help the, them to understand the things of the Old Testament that they don't know nothing of these days. As well as we, you rabbis, need to take in some of the good things of the New Testament that is, needs to be understood to complete what you the puzzle that you don't quite understand all the way. And both parties come together in humbleness of learning of these things together. And and I, I guarantee you will be blessed and you will feel the most high God bless both parties when they do these things. They come together in humbleness. Allow, allow the Spirit of God to be the lead of bringing things together and understanding what they need of of understanding. Amen. God bless. God's a balanced God and God has two witnesses always. And the witnesses are the Old and New Testament, which is really should be called that. It should be called first testimony and second testimony to testify the goodness of God. Amen. The two witnesses of, of the word of God, you know, and they testify the good things the word of God does. And feeds the olive trees, which are the, the living ones that live for God, that are, that are both a Jew and, and both uh, people that are saved, born again, that claim to, to use the word Christian and things in that nature. Even though that's not really biblical, they're, they're called the grafted in. They're those that used to be goims, heathens. Gentiles that now are saved, but they got to understand the whole Word of God. Can't just understand the New Testament. Got to understand the Old Testament, the First Testament, with the Second Testament, so that witness can be in you of all the Word. Same thing in the synagogue. You got to know both witnesses to, to witness the goodness of God, so it's solid in you. So it doesn't matter what. The world says, the Gentile world says anymore, that we know who we are. And when we settle it in our heart, you got to settle it in your heart. You got to settle it in that mind, that beautiful mind, the second greatest gift, the mind that has so many beautiful things. We can have a lecture on that all day. And I, and believe me, there's things that, that it's been revealed about the mind. They even scientists don't even understand, but I understand it perfectly well. There's 27 filters. I'm not going to go into it because this is not a study about this. But if you ever like to, we can all do that. Um, because there's beautiful, God made that. God made that heart. He's made that mind to do good things with those things. Amen. And so we got to do good things with our living soul. Our living soul was braved from Yahweh himself. Whether you know it or not. And give it into the mother's womb. And then it forms into a baby. 
uh, thereafter, and then there's a spirit in there too. But it's dead, and, and it's get quickened as we as we give our lives over to the Spirit of God that has done our, all things for us. Yeshua, the Messiah, He is the Messiah. Accept Him. He'll 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 send His presence unto us and help us and revive our spirits and and quicken our living souls to do the good things of Scripture, all of Scripture that's good and holy for us to, to follow so that we can be men and women of honor, kavav, that we need to be, and to, to zakir. Um, righteousness and justice can be upon us. Amen. Don't forget that shalom, the wholeness that brings us the peace, Amen. And the controlled in other seven not broken. These nature of things. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And Kadosh, Kadoshum, Kadosh, we can Kadoshum. You know, grab a hold of God's holiness. Makes us Kadoshums. Um, makes us holy, little holy ones to do the great holy ones will. Amen. For our life. And I know you understand that, but there's a lot of people that are, that are called pastors that don't, evangelists. The rabbis understand it. A lot of them, but, but your, your other minister friends on the other side do not. And they need to understand this. There's ever, their understanding is brought forward by a humble, upright heart. And is that going to be you today? Now, there's many of you not saved. And Yahweh wants to save you through his spirit that came in the flesh. And became the, not only the spirit of God, the Shekinah, but became also the Mashiach for you as well. Let's pray this prayer and be saved. Dear God Yahweh, I ask you into my spirit, soul, and body as majesty and keen over my life and savior of my life. Love you very much, Yeshua, Mashiach. Amen. God bless. Father, I pray for them that the Kadosh, you as the Kadosh of heaven, Yahweh, they, they, they become Kadoshims, little, little holy ones after your holiness, O oh God. We thank you, Father, I praise you. May the uh, Kadava, uh, your honor and uh, uh, Kazek, your righteousness and justice be upon them. And I thank you and praise you, Father, for all these things. And we praise you. And shalom be with them. Amen. Welcome to the family of God. Remember to sanctify thyself in all your ways before the living God, Yahweh, and the Spirit of Yeshua, Shia, Shekinah. Always. Praise God. God loves you. God has a plan for you. And times are troubles are here, but there also revival is with them. What side will you receive? We receive this of when God's glory comes to you. We will receive judgment or revival. Mercy is our correction. That's why we got to become the Kadoshim of the Kadosh himself, the Holy One himself, Yahweh, Hashem, and his Shekinah of Yah, Shua. Amen. God bless. Amen. Shalom, shalom, shalom. One that brings peace that passes on his sending. None is severed, never broken, complete peace of the living God be with you. For who is the King of Peace is Yahweh, the Prince of Peace, the Spirit of God, Yeshua, Messiah. Shalom. Thank you, Father, for helping them. And always I pray that you remember those that are lost, that need to be found, the sheep that are lost. God wants us to be joint heirs of, of prayer for those that are lost, that they be found back in the sheep pole of uh, older and doing what is right amen god bless pray at all times continuously in your heart and mind remember the beauty 
that God has put in us, to our hearts and our minds, and how we need to set it ablaze to do what is right for God always. Shalom.